We are now reaching the end of a week that is the culmination of over five months of work from the Volunteer Task Force and myself. However, Youth Parliament could not happen without the support and efforts we receive from a number of individuals and organisations. This year, we have again been supported by the Tasmanian Government through the Communities, Recreation and Sport Tasmania Division of the Department of Premier and Cabinet. I would like to extend particular thanks to Georgie Newton for her support throughout the process of organising this program. The enthusiasm with which we are supported by Tasmanian governments of all orientations is a clear demonstration of how they value engaging the young people of Tasmania and I believe this is very encouraging for the future of our state. Thank you again to the YMCA of Hobart and in particular to Jane Croswell whose oversight of our program has been invaluable. Thank you to the Tasmanian Youth Government Association and to Chair, Chairperson Mel Ross for her advice throughout the process of organising YP for several years now. I think I can say with great confidence that the partnership between TIGER, the YMCA and the Tasmanian Government in working together to provide the Youth Parliament Program has had clearly demonstrated success and I hope that by continuing to work even more closely together we can ensure the continued improvement and development of the program into the bright future that I know we have ahead. Thank you also to our two sponsors this year, Tasmanian Alkaloids and the University of Tasmania Faculty of Law. Their recognition of the value of young Tasmanians to the future of our state truly deserves our congratulations and their continued support has made this program better and more accessible. Thank you sincerely to Parliament House for their continued support of our program. The support and assistance of the Parliament House staff, particularly Scott and Stephanie from the House of Assembly, means that we have the privilege of being able to use this amazing building for which we are truly grateful. Thank you now to the wonderful, dedicated task force volunteers who have devoted so much of their time and effort over the past five months into putting this program together. Andrew Gray, Tom Whiteley, Shannon Price, Catherine Ellis, Kate Parrott, Jessie May Branch, Troy McGee, Phoebe Lawrence, Janani Cannon and Maddie Hillman. This amazing group of people have put in late nights, early mornings and based on some calculations from last year, over two and a half thousand man hours into putting this program together. I think it demonstrates how special Youth Parliament is that people so loved their experience that they volunteer their efforts to give back to the program in such a huge way. I cannot adequately express my gratitude for the work you've put in and for your friendship. It has been such a privilege to work with you and I could not have asked for a more supportive group of people. My biggest thanks though must go to the participants of the 2014 Youth Parliament. It is you who truly make this program what it is. On Tuesday morning, I encourage <coughs> you to express your opinions at every available opportunity and from what I have seen, you have grabbed hold of these opportunities with both hands. I think my favourite part of this week has been seeing the way you have de developed your skills in all aspects of the program. You have engaged with difficult debates and complex policy ideas with enthusiasm and consideration for other viewpoints and it has been exciting to see the confidence you have gained in presenting your ideas. Every debate I have seen has been conducted with a clear focus on the issue, respect for each other's opinions and often with humour. I think that if every community discussion were conducted in the same way that you have conducted yourselves this week, then our state would truly be a better place. This, I think, is the real value of Youth Parliament. For the past week, we have had some of the brightest young Tasmanians together to consider and debate some of the most important issues facing our state. And the outcomes of this week will help to influence and improve Tasmania's future. In drawing to a close, I would like to paraphrase Natasha Stott Despoir in the paraphrase of Winston Churchill. Politics is like piano playing. The younger you start, the better. Whilst a career in politics may not be for you, I hope that starting young and the skills you have learned this week will hold you in good stead for the rest of your lives. Just because your discussions no longer take place in the House of Assembly or the Legislative Council does not diminish the importance of what you have to say. Use the freedom of speech that I spoke about to you on Tuesday to continue to make your voices heard. And as you were told by our youth governor, don't wait to be asked for your opinion. Finally, hold on to the friends you've made this week. There is no excuse these days for not staying in touch. And if your experience is anything like mine, they will be a support network into your future. <coughs> and they will provide memories that you will treasure for a lifetime. If you approach your lives after Youth Parliament with the same dignity, respect, 
enthusiasm and openness that you have demonstrated throughout this week that I foresee bright futures for both you and for our state. Thank you. I now have the honour to present on behalf of the 2014 Parliament the bills that have been passed this week. Well, thank you, Carolyn, and, and well said. Ditto. Um, I think that summed up um, exactly what I think we all uh, would like to say about Youth Parliament this week, and certainly what I've witnessed this week. But can I firstly acknowledge my parliamentary colleagues <coughs> who need to stand tall? We have the President of the Legislative Council here, the Honourable Jim Wilkinson, MLC. Thank you uh, for being here. And uh, Jim is also the presiding officer of, uh, of the Tasmanian part, uh, Parliament alongside myself. Um, being the two presiding officers of the two houses. We also have the Honourable Craig Farrell, MC, uh, MLC, uh, the Honourable Rob Valentine, MLC, and I know we have Madeleine Ogilvy, MP, there she is, yes, Labor member for Denison in the House of Assembly. I don't think I've missed anyone else out. Uh, but can I also acknowledge the great work of um, our YMCA through Jane Croswell and certainly their support for this event. I know that um, you as students have benefited this week greatly from their involvement as well. Um, the youth, uh, not the youth task force, but the task force of, of the youth parliament, uh, you've done a wonderful job again this year. I know that it's a highly emotional time for you all uh, when you finish youth parliament, but just think, if it is your last year of eligibility for youth parliament, you can put your hand up for, you, for the ta task force for next year and continue your involvement uh, in helping to organise this great, great event. Um, and I say it's a great event because, as I said um, at the function the other night upstairs in the reception room, um, we as members of parliament do value your opinion as youth. Um, it's, it's often cliched, it's, it's said quite frequently that you are the future, um, but we can't escape the fact that you are our future and you do have views and uh, they are very valuable views and views that um, we should be taking into account in our own deliberations in, in each of the Houses of Parliament. So thank you for getting involved at this level. Uh, and as Carolyn uh, quite eloquently said, um, don't stop here. Um, continue to have uh, your say and your opinion, whether that's uh, through a number of different mediums, but certainly I think uh, your insight this week hopefully will be that we are very accessible members of parliament. I think out of all of the parliaments around Australia, and I've uh, been to a few, is that uh, we are accessible. Whether that's because we're a small population, I don't know. Whether it's because of the hair clerk system, uh, maybe that's it as well, because it's highly competitive. Uh, with, with Madeline, she'll probably agree with me there. Uh, but we, <laughs> we certainly um, do, uh, and, and I do value the opinion of all of my constituents. Uh, something that I have always uh, taken with me as a member of parliament is that um, I've remained active and uh, prepared to listen to all views. And one thing that I think is important is that even if people don't agree with my view on something, that they at least respect that I have a view and that I'm very open about the view that I've formed so that people can understand why I've taken that position. Uh, politics would be a very boring game if we all had the same opinion. Um, and I think as you've, you've seen this week, but it is equally important and if not more important that we stay respectful uh, of other views and opinions that people hold uh, from whatever background uh, they've formed that opinion. So I hope that that is something that you take away uh, as politicians, uh, we often bear the brunt of some fairly aggressive comments at times, uh, but it is really heartening when we receive comments and feedback from people saying, look, I don't agree with your view, but I, I respect the fact that you have a view. Uh, and I think that, that is something that we should all take away uh, from the, your involvement this week in this parliament, that uh, you've had different views at times and you've remained respectful of those views. So well done uh, on that achievement. <coughs> Give yourselves a clap for that. So I know before I get to hand out some certificates um, and some well-earned certificates, I know that some of the issues that you've been uh, debating this week have been very wide-ranging and, and something that I've picked up on in, over the last few years, you've really engaged in, I think, more extensive debates than what 
we've sort of expected in the past from having uh, uh, younger views and, and you know, you've, you've been debating everything from mental health in schools through to legalisation of marijuana, which of course is a very hot topic at the moment. Um, education reform, again a, a hot topic. Public transport, uh, drinking age of 21, gee, it's, it's um, hardly surprising that didn't pass. <laughs> Um, but also voluntary voting at age 16. I missed that debate, but I, but I would have liked to have, uh, have um, seen that debate and, and certainly heard about it. But from what I've seen throughout the week, uh, you've been able to express your views and as I said the other night, do it very succinctly in a very short space of time and that's something all of our parliamentarians could learn uh, from each of you, I'm sure, uh, to get to their point and get to it quickly. Um, so without further ado, I would like to uh, hand out some certificates now to all of you as participants. Um, and you can get emotional, do whatever, um, that's fine. If it's your final year, we expect that, don't we? <laughs> we do. So I think the first one is Brittany Thomas. Sayed Ronan. I 
Donna Garrity. Claire Vickers. Parliamentary staff, as, as um, Carolyn said, without them this week really wouldn't have happened. 
Uh, so thank you to Stephanie and Scott. And I noticed the clerk of the house is in here as well, Peter Alcock, so I must acknowledge him as well. Um, he saves my life on a number of occasions <laughs> uh, on parliamentary week, uh, so without him I couldn't function either. Uh, so well done again, congratulations and enjoy afternoon tea. <laughs> And I'm sure Carolyn will issue further instructions when you need. <laughs> we could all just have a bit more freedom with the chat now. <laughs>